we should be live. <clears throat> we should be live. There we go. So welcome to Love Speaks Love, everybody. And particularly welcome to Love Speaks Love, my two beautiful guests today. I am here with Alessandra Giuliani and Kristen Bumpersett. Welcome, welcome, you two. Thank you. It feels lovely awesome. being here. It feels awesome, awesome to have the three of us together. I'm really excited for this. So for those of you, um, yeah, we've been we've been planning this a while, <laughs> like two months or so. Um, and so I think this came about, it's hard for me to remember which, which one popped in my head first, but I think it was Alessandra. I think I was feeling into who to invite on with you. Um, and I know there are certain people that you know, like I connected with you first through Marianne Savino. So I was wondering, I was feeling into it being Marianne, which would, would have been a beautiful combination, but I wasn't, I wasn't getting a, a yes for that. And then Kristen just like just dropped in and I was like, oh, I really like the feel of that. So we created a little thread with the three of us together and it's been really beautiful. I really enjoyed our online <laughs> connections, our little online chats and our what's going on with the energy kind of <laughs> kind of conversations. Um, so yeah, welcome, welcome both of you. I'm just gonna um, turn the volume down on the phone and share this along. And then suddenly whoosh, the energy just went up a notch. Um, if anyone wants to share anything while I'm doing this, feel free, no, no pressure. <laughs> And if anybody watching wants to share this along, that would be to any groups or anything where you think this might be acceptable, um, then feel free. Wouldn't it be marvelous to have a producer in the background doing this? Okay, share it there. So I've just got two shares left to go. Okay, that's about done. Okay, so we have brought some friends along. So it's just it's this one particularly that wants to join us. Yeah, I'm feeling the Lemurian a lot. Mm. Yes, it's powerful. I'm really elegant as well. Like we were saying about crystals being chunky before, that one's really elegant. Yeah, I wanted to ask you. I don't know where I was going to say, where did you find it? But I guess it, because I kept seeing it in a desert and you found it. That's the visual I had. So maybe I mean, which land did it come from? This one? Yeah. To be honest, I don't remember. I got it from a crystal store, uh, but I don't remember where this one in particular were, uh, were found. I don't but it spoke to me. I felt it immediately when I came into the store. Yeah. And yeah, it's uh, it's pretty powerful. <laughs> it is. I love it. Oh, and thank you everybody who is joining us on the live and who will be with us on the replay or on YouTube. So we normally start the sweet love with a little heart to heart connect at the beginning. So um, we're going to do that now. <sighs> 
Thanks for welcoming everybody here. Welcoming everybody to the heart of Love Speaks Love. And let us all just bring our awareness, our consciousness into our heart space. And let's just take a few breaths, breathing into our hearts. Conscious breaths into our beautiful bodies. Allowing the breath of life, the breath of love into our hearts and into every cell. Feeling all of our hearts beating together as one in this one unified field of love. And bringing to our consciousness our connections, our heart connections. And extending our heart awareness out now to the heart of Gaia. So you might, you might just feel your energy going deeper into the earth. Or you might feel Gaia's heart coming up from the earth and enveloping you in her, her love, in her gratitude. and just feeling Gaia's recognition of all of us. And I'm just feeling cocooned in a blanket of Gaia's beautiful, honoring love. And feeling that love moving into every cell, particularly into our heart. And while we bask in the love of Gaia, just extending that heart awareness out now to the heart of the sun. Feeling the love from the sun being. And I often feel the energy of the sun moving into my solar plexus. And the solar plexus feels to me like a solar battery charged up by the energy of the sun. And just feeling that energy moving all around our bodies into every cell. Going deep into the DNA. To all the tiniest subatomic particles of light. and extending that heart awareness out even further now to source creator. And I say even further, but recognizing within that, that there is no separation, that we are all connected. And connecting in this way just raises our awareness of that connection. And feeling the energy from prime creator, source creator, moving into our bodies, into our cells. And already feeling the presence of our multidimensional aspect. Feeling the presence of the beings from inner earth. The ancestors and the guardians of the lands that we find ourselves upon. Along with the beings of inner earth, I'm feeling the presence of the elementals. The she, the shining ones. The fae, the elven kingdom. 
the gnomes. The gnomes particularly honoring our choice of crystals that we've brought with us today. And also the dragons and the unicorns. And also feeling the presence of the galactics, our star families. So just handing over at this point to either Kristin or Alessandra, any, anybody who has anything to add at this point. So just taking a few more deep breaths. And with our awareness in our hearts, if your eyes are closed, just opening them whenever you're ready. And if you have water, you may just want to take a few sips of water. Ah. <sighs> So welcome again. I opened up really... a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure if you were just pausing. If, if I felt like there might have been a stream about to about to come through. Yeah, it was it was a lot coming coming in. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. let's let's just start with the um, <laughs> as we often do, just with the with the current energies and. So we are just post the full moon of, of last weekend and the eclipse. So we're well into eclipse eclipse season. Um, so how are, you, how are you both? How are you both riding these waves of energy at the moment? A lot better than a few years ago, I will say. <laughs> um, I think it's been very interesting this last week leading up to the full moon. Uh, I became aware of a lot of old patterns sort of resurfacing. Of course, there are deeper layers and it's this constant spiral we're moving through. But it got really, really clear and really obvious. And so I got to this point before the weekend where I saw very clearly what kind of choices and where I needed to be, like what state I needed to be in within myself in order to move through in a very different way because I really felt the pressure uh, of the energies and I knew that I as an empowered being have another choice like I can I can choose what state I want to be in and meet it with um, so I feel I've learned quite a lot from it already um, but it's it's constantly energies coming in now and it's so much happening I was in the inner earth and the shifts in Gaia um, so it's it's almost like it feels like a surprise every morning when you wake up and it's just like, how is it going to be today or in a few hours or it's shifting a lot. But it's this constant clearing, constant new awarenesses. And it feels like we're moving towards some kind of an, like the edge of something that is like really going to like flip or change or shift a lot. Um, at the same time, as I'm very aware that saying that can make people stress out about it like oh I need to clear this I need to like get ready for something and I don't think that's helpful at all because we're all where we need to be and just taking one step at a time and dealing with what's just in front of us um, but by doing that I think we're we're really about to shift something quite big I've been feeling big shifts too Maybe they were personal for me, but maybe they're for everybody else. It was related to Aries because I'm an Aries. And it was one week ago, maybe two weeks ago, there was a big conjunction of Jupiter entering Aries. And it will be like that for the next year. And 
first of all, that was a report that I read, but I resonated and it was saying what you were saying, Kristen, shift, 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 things, boom, 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 going into gear and momentum. And I can feel it. And being an Aries, <laughs> you know, you get addicted to the, the go because for me and the rest of the world, we've been in a state of the inactivity, not in everything, but it's been, we've, I feel like I've been pushed into a state of the womb of the mother. And it's, it's hard to be there because we're so trained to go. Bzzz. All I'm saying is I'm feeling the shifts and I like some of the boost to be back. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it spoke to me like, um, like I felt quite charged since the weekend and quite buoyant. I mean, that can change, that can change quite quickly. Um, and that's part of it as well, that it can change really quickly, that you can be really buoyant and then you're like flat and, and just, you know, flat or on your hands and knees sobbing. Um, and then you can kind of be laughing, you know, pretty quickly after that as well. It, it just seems, but it, like you said before, Kristen, it, it seems easier to ride, ride the waves and kind of greet them more openly rather than you know really trying to push them away and 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 put the stops on everything like I think most of us have, have stopped doing that now like I don't hear many people and I don't feel that many people in resistance these days it, it does feel like we are riding with the waves like we've had a few surf lessons and we we're on the boards and we're kind of, you know, and, and the dolphins are playing with us as well. It feels, it feels much more playful in that field. I think that's key to really be aware of wherever we have resistance to an energy is coming in, whether it's from the earth or whether it's from the sun or from any source and just let it flow through the body. And also with emotions, just knowing that it's energy that is actually moving and letting the movement happen because when we resist something we're we're stopping it and and it just wants to move um and playfulness is a very good way to to deal with it with and it's a big program as well that we've learned that play is not what we want to be in and it's not you know the proper way to do something or what we should or would do so i think it's an important point Have you, I mean, we've, we've just alluded to this, but have you changed, changed the way that you, uh, uh, how can I put it? How have you changed the way that you deal with the energies? Like, do you have different practices for dealing with them? I'm, uh, I am embarrassed to say this one. <laughs> um, um, water i just have to shower more and take longer in the shower which is hard to say it if everybody's in california i guess you have to reserve the water but um but especially on my head because i'm thinking so much and then i would always get headaches back here so showering more really helps and then and this is another one i'm embarrassed to say i call it emo dance which is kind of the concept concept of power poses but it's emo so you're like getting it out of you <laughs> and that works for me and it really it really helps because I, I like there was something that you were saying Kristen about the surprises and it's it's good and bad but I know you meant it really good I get a bad surprise and then it's so intense but then I go through with it and then later in the day it'll be a fantastic surprise so this buoyancy that you're saying in these two I'm really feeling it and I'm amazed at us all of us yeah. I love that term, emo dance. I'm, I'm keeping that term. That is just so perfect. Because, yeah, and, and I'm the same. Like, I love having a good dance where you just really let your body express the emotions through your body. And then you end up, because it's so ridiculous quite often, you just end up in stitches. <laughs> and, yeah, especially when it's, like, an angry dance. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. those, two, those two, like, angry dance, they, it seems like those two don't go together, but they... They kind of do, they really, they really do align. And it's such a beautiful way of, 
of shedding of you know moving through stuff and no no you know not having any any inhibitions just you know maybe not when I'm walking down the street but in the privacy of my own home I can stump my feet and I can and making sounds that's oh. it's almost like you've got the emo sounds coming through with the emo dance too oh well, that's taking it up a notch <laughs> <laughs> I've made sounds in my releasing recently that I've never made and it's felt so good, you know, to wail, to, to kind of just really express in a way that I would normally, you know, this stiff upper lip, this, this like English prim and proper doing things in a certain way, that just goes out the window these days. It's like, just let it all out however it wants to express. And facial expressions, that's another one. Like I really smell sometimes like a dog and really pull, pull expressions like I'm growling, like, you know, kind of showing your teeth and. <laughs> yeah, I think for me as well, well, the whole thing about dancing, I am a dancer, so that's, I love hearing about that. <laughs> and I think it's very powerful, the whole, I mean, no matter what way you're dancing, but just the way of connecting with emotions and expressing it through the body. It's, it's so powerful because it, it moves both the physical body, the emotional body. It also affects the mental body. It, it affects everything. Um, it's very, very powerful. I found myself as well. I mean, the nature helps and movement of the body is more important than it has been for me. Um, and also I've been eating a lot. I know there's been many people that have said the opposite, but for me, it's just, I've been having a hunger, which is just like, I'm eating and eating and eating. And is what you're eating different too? Depends on when you compare it with, like if you compare it to half a year ago, it's pretty similar, but compared to years ago, it's a bit different. I eat quite clean. And even, even with that, like sometimes it can be very carby and feel like that's the right thing to do. You know, I, I feel that there's, um, there's often no, no one size fits all in, in the diet. Um, I remember listening to Lisa Transcendence Brown a few years ago talking about how sometimes it would, what, what would it be like you know, like loads of popcorn or, or loads of loads of carby things that she would normally not not eat. And there were certain things I can't remember. I think it was carbs, but she was saying something like when you're, for example, and I, I might not have this right, but when your crystalline body is being activated, you might want blah, blah, blah. So if your body's kind of calling for that to, to go with it, yeah, I think that's really important to eat intuitively and to listen to the body rather than someone outside of oneself. Because mm. we are moving through different stages. And that's, that's something I've gotten in several channelings as well, that we're, it's so important to listen to the body because we, it can shift from one week to another what the body needs in this shift and transformation. And so to really tune in and choose what, what the body asks for rather than what someone says or a book says is very important even seasonally and depending on where we're living I think makes a difference too I think a diet in a very cold place will feel will you know you want something different from when you're in the sun all the time Alessandra have you got have you got stuff to add there <laughs> I have a very weird relationship with food. Uh, lately, like in, in just the last several days, for some reason, fruit has come really back online for me. And specific fruits hold so much electricity. And as you were both talking about the changes and the shifts of the last few days, I, I keep feeling electrical and more buzz and more online. So I was feeling the being electrical in a good way and being online and being buzzing in this <laughs> pleasurable way and having the fruit 
uh, help it. There was something that was more alive in the food. I was feeling it more um, electric and electrolytes. I think we need more electrolytes or micro minerals, but we each might get them in different ways. Um, that's on my radar, especially micro minerals. Mm. Interesting. So when we were in the visualization at the beginning, um, I felt a lot of joy from the beings and it was like, Vroom. they were all you know like we three kind of in the center um along with everybody watching and you know whether they're live or on the replay kind of with us either with us in the center or in the circle around us but all these beings were just vroom, really and smiling there was such a lot of joy and gratitude um and i i mentioned this to both of you that you know, we didn't necessarily have like a, a format for the show, but the beings and our kind of relationship with them, how, how we work with them, that kind of thing I'm feeling is, is wanting to be shared. Um, and this is such a, this is quite vast. Um, and one of, one of the things that I'm really loving is, is connecting with the, with the she. I might call them, so the S-I-D-H-E, also called the shiny ones, like the very, very tall beings that are believed to have been some of the original inhabitants of Earth kind of before humans came along and they are much more evolved than us. So their frequency is higher, so we won't necessarily see them, we might do, um, but they have been really very present with me along with Sasquatch, which is a very recent thing for me as well. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling the earth beings and, and the Fae to kind of share about them first of all. I have something to say. <laughs> so uh, I just moved to Italy and I've been here a year. I grew up in Italy, but I moved to the States. Now I'm back and it's amazing. And I hard to explain. I met some she type beings, uh, but I was I had different names for them. But it's the same frequency that you're saying. So um, I'm here, and ten minute drive away from me is a mountain range, and in and there's a mountain range and there's a dry lake bed. And energetically, I want to say the name because I'm honoring the name Fratoni del Vivaro, which means the grasslands of the Vivaro which I don't remember what that one means, um, but it's only the new battle. And I kept going there and I kept going there. And so I met these big fairy beings because fairy seems like usually it means small, but, and the feeling that I had was really surprising because what I read from books or inner earth or the Lemurians that were the original, beings, human fairy beings that stayed behind. That to me, I loved it, um, felt older, like, oh, they're, they're, they're ancestral. But the being that I met felt newer in that she, she was a blue bumblebee fairy, a big one. And she was showing me new beings that were coming in, being invited by the older ancient, call them Lemurian or she fairies. So I was surprised by the activity and renewal. And I almost want to say it's, it was the good news saying Earth is doing so well in some strata and networking that there's immig immigrants, pioneers coming in. So I call them the Protoni pioneers. And there, there's a lot to meet. And I feel, I felt supported because I'm here trying to build the new Earth. And they're there building the new Earth. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm saying too much because it means so much to me. So I'll stop here. Oh, God, if there's more to say, then keep going. It was so much beautiful energy it, because something about it, it had this renewal frequency to it. Maybe from the books that I read before, maybe it felt like it was so ancient that we couldn't relate to. There was an incredible relatability to these I'm going to call them star fairies. That's my language. But um, 
And it felt like so much love that you were saying, which I felt. Because when you were doing the meditation, I was tearing and tearing. And I don't usually tear. And that's a very special occasion, which it is. And it was just this energy. I don't know how else to convey it other than hopefully it comes through. But it was, it was an energy of hope and new beginnings, but linking to the ancientness. So I was like, I'm so happy. <laughs> Please come and visit them and see them together, you know. Yeah, I felt when we were doing the meditation and you started to mention the inner earth, I just felt everything opening and I saw many, many beings and I normally connect to the inner earth and also specifically to a group of eight blue beings, which are galactics. And one of those are in the inner earth as well. And then there's this Atlantean being as well. And there's been a lot from of Atlantis and also memories for me coming up from Atlantis uh, the last couple of months. Um, so, and also I've been receiving these messages. So ancient wish, wisdom, coming up because it it has to do with the uh, with the energy coming up from the inner earth and from from Gaia and the activation of all the crystals that have information and and wisdom and codes in them which is which are held in the earth so I think as all of this is sort of just evaporating almost like into our field from the earth it it comes into our fields and we start remembering more because we we do hold the knowledge it's just as our frequency come to like a certain point, it turns on. So I think it's important for people also to remember that it's not like an activation from the outside or someone activating you, whether it's through lang light language or through some sort of a session. It's just about the frequency in the body coming to a point where what you already has got actually turns on. Um, and there are so many beings around I, in the elementals I like the gnomes for example that I often meet in the forest and they often almost always make me laugh it's just I'm like giggling around because they're just like running around my feet and they're just especially if I'm like going through something or I'm just sitting down and I'm like not feeling good then it's, I can even like feel them like tapping on my on my foot or something and just like come on cheer up so I think it's, how can I say this? It's it's easy to focus on all the different beings, right? Because it's it's exciting and it's so many different dimensions and different frequencies and they look different and they sound different and they feel different. Um, but what is happening now as well, which is really important is that all of it is sort of coming together. So it's the interconnectedness, not only between the humans, which is very important and which is very needed on this planet, but also the interconnectedness and understanding that we are galactics as well, that the beings in the inner earth also are a part of the earth, that like everything is interconnected on a whole different level. So I think it's real important to remember that as well when we're talking about beings, because it's, it's really easy to just go out and, and to keep ourselves separate from it. Um, now both of you mentioned in that about about seeing these beings i'd love if you could expand um expand on that so and it it is often a combination but i don't know that's that puts it in a bit of a leading question but that, that's what i'm kind of picking up really but um so for example we may have in the past have really just seen with our third eye, like with our eyes closed in that kind of meditation space. But has, has your vision changed with these? You know, it, it feels like it's more of a combination, but I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear how much you, you're seeing with, with, with these eyes, like with your eyes, with all your eyes open. <laughs> well, I do. So I think... <laughs> It is definitely, if all the eyes are open, sometimes I see things and they're like shadows, but then the third eye will kick in and then you'll see more. So it's almost like through astral vision or, it, it, yeah, it, the eyes are picking up different things. I just want to add though, 
that lately for me, and I haven't heard other people talking about this, so I don't know if there's a word that I should know, but it's empathic. So I might see a shadow and it catches me. I know it's a fairy or something, but then empathically I will feel what it's feeling and it goes, la, 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 and it's walking along. So then I get the image. Uh, so I just want to throw that out because I think that's something that a lot of us have. I think it's easier maybe for all of us to tap into the empathy part and, and that can then kick in the, the other ones. I think, I think a lot of us get frustrated because you want to see so much. And I, I think if we tap in on a bigger strength, then all the other ones can come online. I love that, like see, seeing with empathy. Yes. And feeling yeah. yeah yeah because when you led the meditation and i'm there tearing up and we're marinating in gratitude it's their gratitude and i'm feeling what the our guides all of them i don't they were bigger than guides but yeah and i think we all have that easier open yeah we definitely all have that there's there's no doubt and i think a key is to come back to the body and remember that we are we are that light and we are that higher consciousness in the body. So if we try to go out of the body in order to see something or go somewhere, or we're actually disconnecting from our own ability in a sense, it's all about coming back into the body and being in the body, relaxing, grounding, and just opening and expanding. And it will, it will open. For me though, it's, I would say I saw more, like with my physical eyes before than what I do now. It's different though, because uh, I was seeing, you know, like spirits and everything since I was a child and it was very intense. Um, and there were a few years in my, like when I was a teenager where it was a bit more quiet and then it came on like really full on and it was very difficult for a while. Um, and I had to like start practicing, like, you know, going for a drive and like, asking other people like do you see that that woman in in the window and I would say no there's no woman in the window and then I would like you know learn to differentiate what was physical and what was not physical because it was it was the same to me and that was quite um quite intense for a while um now I can tune into those kind of things and those realms uh if I want to and I don't typically do that with that type of spirits um but then i will see it in my third eye rather than physically or i can it's almost like i can see a layer um with my third eye on the physical with my eyes open but with the eight galactic beings those blue beings i met them in the forest once and that was i think back in 2019 in the autumn and i was standing just in the forest and i was grounding in uh, and I was really relaxed and just felt so grounded and so in my body. And I was opening my eyes and just going to continue for my walk. And then there were eight really tall blue beings around me. And that was like physical. I didn't feel them before I opened my eyes, but they were there. And I was just like jumping when I saw them. So I have seen a lot physically. Um, and it still happens, but it's it's almost like those two are merging. So it's more like I see a layer with my third eye on top of the physical. So I can sort of see both at the same time, which to me is much easier to navigate and easier to sort of tune in and, and tune out. Of course, there's sometimes there's just like, I had an experience last week where it was just huge thing appearing uh, on the sky, like this huge light uh, suddenly out of nowhere. Uh, and I was like, this just didn't happen. I don't understand what this is. And I continued walking and it happened once more. And for the next 10 minutes, I saw everything just before it happened. Like people coming, cars driving, like it was for 10 minutes and then it just was quieting down. So I do have those kind of experiences as well. But for the most part, it's it's like a layer on top. Yeah, beautiful. And it, it does feel like there's a merging between, between our senses. Um, I started off being more of a feeler and really wanted to see. 
but I feel that if I was able to see at the beginning, I wouldn't have tuned in my feeling senses and my knowing as much as I could just see it. Um, and now I, I do see, I don't always, for years I'll get like a shimmering, like a, almost like a heat haze. Yeah. So I know that there's something there and it is generally stronger in, in my peripheral vision. But that's changing too. Like, you know, it's not just in my peripheral vision. It, it's more front vision now. I'm seeing more, more energy. But I'll probably, my alert that there's a being or presences with me will be the feeling in my body, like the tingles or... You know, sometimes you're you're just stopped dead in your in your tracks. Like you, you're you're just oh, I can't I can't go any further. And you know, there's a reason why I just need to be need to be here. Yeah. But my vision is definitely stronger with with my eyes closed, like stronger than it ever ever has been. But in nature and at night, particularly, dusk seems you know those in between times of of dawn and, and dusk when the veil is is thinner that will be when I tend to see more energy. And this, this house that I'm living in, you know, the walls are very plain. That really helps when you've got plain, plain walls inside so you can see movement much more, much more easily. But even outside when it's in the woods or whatever, it just feels much more strong these days. And it's not, it's like when you go to sleep, it's, it's like there used to be a process um, to get to theta, to get to dream space, but it feels like we're dropping into theta straight away. So you start dreaming even before you fall asleep sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, any, anything you wanna, you wanna add? It just feels like everything is more available now and stronger. And <laughs> I don't know why my guides keep using the word bioavailable. I'm like, how do you apply that to psychic seeing? But it's what you're saying. It's, it's the, when you're dropping into the theta, like you said, or even it just, everything, seeing energies, moving energies, sensing them, going into altered states and coming back, it's more fluid. And maybe there's more of the higher frequencies that are more here because when I started doing this work as a healer and getting paid for it, because I was doing it for a long time, but in 2011, I remember, and it feels so weird, in 2011, when I had a client and I would take them to Arcturus, they would be laying down and I would essentially be doing some sort of hypnosis that I didn't know I was doing with the voice. And energetically, I was taking the person astrally up to Arcturus to a crystal temple and things were being done on them. But it was very deep and it was really hard work. Like just to, to go up, there was all sorts of protocol that I had. I had giant crystals. Now, how many years later, it's what you were saying. You can drop in, slip in. It's, it feels to me like maybe Arcturus, instead of being up there, it's here. And I think there's something that you were saying, Kristen, with the steam. That was great. That's how I feel it too, because it permeates everything. And then there's something else that you're saying, Kristen, about inner earth. And it was like, I think it was still the steam, but I feel it with molecules and the minerals again, and maybe even Arcturus. It's just permeating all. And I think maybe it's more bioavailable, whatever that means, <laughs> at least in the senses. So, um, and then it's increasing. So that's very exciting because things can be increasingly um, effortless, I think, and powerful. Definitely, and as our physical bodies are shifting more and more and actually having higher frequency as well, it's less of a difference. But it's also important, I think, with, uh, you know, for people to know that not everyone will see or that won't be, everyone can see, but it won't be the first one to come online, so to speak, for everyone. Someone will have this clear cognizance of just knowing, someone will feel, some people will smell, some people will hear. So it's it's about really opening up to all the senses and not being determined in a way or how it's going to look but being open to 
to learn and to experience how it's looking for each and every one. I think for me, particularly, I had so much resistance to all of this since I was a child. Um, and it's taken me years to embrace this part of myself, which I now know and I mean, I love it, um, but I did feel that it was a curse. So everything that I saw, I think it got so intense for me because I, I, I wasn't supposed to run away from it. So the more I tried to run away, the more physical it got. So I, I couldn't get away from it in, in any way. Um, so I think that's a good example as well about the resistance and having like an idea from the human mind or how it, something is going to be or not be and then not opening up for what's actually in front of us. I like that you said that because that's what I was feeling but I feel like you said it much better. That's what I was feeling is that we each have, we can be, somebody might, again, I'm gonna go back to the empathy. Some, some of us or a lot of us might be so good at that and you can receive so much information but this person might be really focusing on, I wanna see, I wanna see. And you might be saying, well, it's not that great all the time, <laughs> you know? And so that's, yeah, I, I, I wish more people could tune into the one that they're really, really good at and, and really love it and enjoy it. Because I, when I was getting trained by my guides, they would be funny, which was really annoying to me. I, would doing, I was doing session on clients and one time, I couldn't see psychically. So I had to use my other senses. And then the next time I couldn't use the sense that I had just done. And it's funny now, but it was like the carousel of the senses. But now I appreciate all of them so much. <laughs> and like you were saying, Kristen, is to allow it, which I, I think was eventually, that's what I was doing too, that is to allow it. And I think then it will come so much stronger and in the way that's really good for you. Yeah. And it is that energy of if you're clutching for something, if you, you know, if you want that so much, you, you're going to push it away. Yeah. I think that's what you both say there is, is amazing on really focusing on, on what you have mm -hmm. and just allowing, because it's not really, in a way, it's not seeing. It's allowing the vision to come to your eyes. Does that, does that make sense? Instead of like trying to catch it somehow with your eyes you're just letting the vision the visions come to you Claire audience took me quite a long time to it was almost like I asked a question and then covered my ears like I was scared to hear an answer somehow um and even that has changed like the Claire audience has been present for a while and it would I would kind of hear hear an answer, feel an answer, how, however it was, but it was kind of to my right behind me. Whereas now it, it surrounds me. It's not just from over there. And it's, it's like a, a multitude. It's not necessarily, it's multi-layered, if that makes sense. I can absolutely relate. And for me, in the beginning, I would hear different guides and different beings on different, in different places. And it helped me a lot to understand who it was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So like my principal guide or who's been with me since birth, um, I would always hear like uh, on the right side here. And then there's others that would be like coming in from different, different areas around me. But the first time I heard something clear audiently, I was in the kitchen cooking and I wasn't thinking of anything of these topics as well or at all. And then suddenly I heard a voice and I turned around and there was no one behind me, no one talking. I was alone at home, but I heard this man's voice and I started just writing down the sentences because it didn't make sense to me. Well, it was like a sentence, you know, that made sense, but I couldn't get anything more of it. So I just started having a paper on my kitchen table and every time I would hear a sentence because it could come like just randomly like three days later it would come another sentence and then maybe in two hours and then in two weeks and so it would be just random and I would write them all down and I actually found that paper that first paper that I wrote those down last summer and that was so fun because now I understand everything there's like it's so 
it, it was incredible, like, because now it all makes sense. Uh, but at that time, I didn't understand it. But I think just not attaching to it. And even though it might not make sense, just make a note of it. If you see something and it, or you think you have seen something or you have heard something or you felt something, just write it down so you won't forget it and then just leave it. And then maybe later on, it will make sense in some way. And I used to almost, almost hear as a thought. It was like a thought dropped in, but it was <clears throat> almost like hearing it, but not with my ears necessarily, but it kind of, and I think this is, this is often how claircognizance works. For me, it seems to drop in through my crown. Um, and do you ever have the feeling that you're like hearing with your eyes or seeing with your ears? You know, when I, when I do sessions, it's like I see with my hands. It, it's like there's not as much differential between, between all the senses, like they're, they're much more merged as one. Yeah, I was actually, no, sorry, on. continue, Alessandra. Um, I was gonna say when I do light language, and it, it's usually really powerful when I'm, so I'm doing light language with my voice, I get very clear visions, but they're all mixed together, which is what I think you're saying, Denise. It's all merging, like steam. I just like your steam. <laughs> And what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. What was if the last you, thing you said to me? If you see with the different yeah, like, Ah, yes, I was actually tuning into that. Thank you, Alessandra. I was tuning into that last week because I felt everything coming deeper into me in a way, like on a physical level. Uh, and I was hearing these cracks in my own body. Um, not physically, but I could hear them energetically uh, as this was happening. And I was tuning in and asking, what is this? And what I said is that all information coming in with all the senses are coming deeper into the body. So it's actually merging and making a bigger picture with all of them sort of contained. And it's, it's almost like having more pieces of the puzzle, but it, it won't come together until they can actually fit together with the with the central parts like right so there's less restriction less blocks in the body so it it's moving more through the whole body and that, that flow and that movement as we talked about in the beginning with the, with the movement of energies in the body is i think a big part of why why we feel this part of the the senses just merging and coming together and seeing things more in layers as well and everything is frequency. So a sound, a sound hits your whole body. It doesn't just go to your ears. The, the sound is everywhere. It's just that our ears pick it up as a sound. But the frequency could be a visual that we would then pick up with our eyes. But it's, it's all frequency, really. Mm -hmm. There's something that you're saying I don't know how to explain it. So you're saying sound frequency. Um, when I'm really dialed in and channeling, yeah, you know, there's all different kinds of channeling, but when I'm channeling, it starts off with the light goes on in my brain and I can see the light is everywhere. And then it goes, so the frequency is everywhere. So it's in my body, in the aura, the biofield. So I'm all lit up. I see, I'm, I'm emanating the light. So I don't know how to explain this to people because the focus for me is never just the third eye. My whole body is the third eye. Does that make sense? So I'm embodying the frequency. Um, I just wanna say, there's a picture, I wish I could show it to you, that it's uh, thousands of years old in a cave, you know, the, the cave painting of the shaman men and women. And I showed something similar because it showed like a stick figure and the round head and all the dots in the head. But then it was showing dots outside the head. And I was like, that's what I feel. <laughs> I love the way you explained that. 
And I think I think that's really helpful for anybody who wants to start channeling as well. Yeah, thank you. Kristen, how is it for you when, when you channel? Like, how is that? Are you even able to explain that as a, as a <laughs> like, process? In a human language? <laughs> yeah. uh, it depends uh, how deep into a site I'm going. So I can, for example, in the mornings I tune in and I, then I just connect in. Normally it's Merlin coming in the, when I'm tuning in in the morning. Um, and then he either takes me somewhere that's all like visual and then I just hear some sentences that I write down uh, but when I'm going into like a, a deeper channeling I I first ground myself then I I open and I allow it to go through the through the body um, I always of course feel into the energy I I will always be able to go out of it if it if it would be an energy I didn't want to connect with um, but it's either a light trance state or a full trance state when I'm going into a channeling um, and I will feel sometimes if it's a longer channeling and there's different energies coming through uh, sometimes I start breathing and it's not me controlling it but it's just like this extremely slow so slow breath and I feel that's happening when I'm being attuned to a higher frequency so the higher the frequency I'm channeling the deeper into the site I, I need to be. But for um, example, with light language, is that's like I can I hear it very often and I can just flip in and out of light language. Um, so I don't need to be that deep into a site to start with that, but it can take me really deep very fast. Um, but the first times I was channeling, I didn't almost know what it was. So it just happened I had no control and it just I suddenly was in a trance and I started talking and it I didn't understand anything um my ex would just be filming it and just recording it you know just and then I would pop out when it was finished so it it took me quite some years to to learn how to hold the energy how to ground the energy and how to actually how to control myself of when I want to connect and channel and when I don't want to um, so that it doesn't happen you know in the in the grocery store because that would happen as well <laughs> and it's not fun <laughs> um, does that ever happen anymore with with either of you 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 mentioned um if it's an energy you don't want to connect with and I feel in the beginning when you're first starting to do this and you're not really sure what's what and what feels right that's really kind of key to the process but it's been a long a long time for me I can't even remember an occasion when I think oh I, I don't want to connect with you because it feels like you kind of move into a space either when you're in your heart space or when your frequency is, has risen to a certain point but it's almost like nothing things can't get in really because it's not a match it's not a not a frequency match I think for me the biggest shift has been that I'm filling my own field so I think that that's the most important protection you can have um, in the beginning because I was so open and I couldn't hold anything and I was running away from a lot of things in myself I was not present in my field I didn't feel feel it with my energy which means that it's very open for anything to come in yeah. and as I'm as open as I am it's just you know 10 times more um, and then of course in the beginning I would try to learn these techniques so like having something around me and protecting me and it felt safer um, so for anyone who's like in the beginning and they feel that can help uh, do that but I think the most important thing um, when I when I talk with clients, for example, or in my videos, I never teach protection in that way. I think the most important thing is to feel your own field, because if you're fully in the body and you're just expanding your own energy really out and you're being in your body and whenever if there's like if you're afraid of like a psychic attack or like entities coming in or whatever, 
it's if something is coming in, it's because they have there's something they can hook into. And so finding where they're actually hooking in so that you can release that in yourself, they won't be able to hook in anymore. And and that's because we are sovereign beings and we we are powerful beings of light within this human body. And so if you remember that and we really feel our feel, it won't be an issue. Um, and when I connect into channel, I haven't had anything coming in that I don't want to connect with uh, for many years. I mean, probably a couple of times in the beginning, um, but not more than that, because it's you're going into a state which is different. Uh, so it's, yeah, for me, that hasn't been an issue when I'm going into a channel. When you say feel, if, and I, I do want to go over to you, Alessandra, but I just want to, I just want to go back into this. When you say feel your field, can you expand on that? Is, is that kind of like you're fully in your body, you, you're very present in your physical body, but knowing that your your energy emanates out from your physical body, and then feeling into how this this is the way I'm taking it anyway, feeling into you know, if something feels bristly or a bit spiky, for example, like that's perhaps how I would feel it. Whereas energies that I'm wanting to connect with, they're very loving to start with, like you, you might feel teary um, you, because of the love and, and the gratitude that, that you can feel. And it would feel more like this. It would feel smoother and in resonance with, with my field. Yeah, when I, so... I think the technique my guys learned me very early on was to to be centered in myself so before I do anything else I I ground and I what I do when I sort of visualize that I'm I'm filling my own field is to come deeply into my body really breathe and really be in the body and then expand from the heart and just feel as I'm breathing that I can try to feel and just I practice and I practice and I practice you know for a long time to before it started to to happen just like this but I would feel with my breath how far out I could feel my energy so maybe it would be like you know one centimeter around my body and then on the next breath maybe two and then maybe only one centimeter again and then more and more until I felt my energy around my whole body and then when I feel something coming in I feel it when it starts uh, coming into my field so just in the beginning of my field so I I feel it way before it sort of hits my physical body um, so it's it's there I will sort of look into whether it's something I would like to connect with or not um, yeah yeah beautiful I spend 45 minutes with each session on clients and doing I think what you're saying Kristen the, the guides are training my clients how to take up their own space and it takes a lot of training so the, the guides do a lot of work on the aura and the physical body and then they keep showing me more space and so the guides are filling it in with things that you like, crystal things, but these are all energetically with bringing in more guides. And for many, many, many years, I was doing it. I've been doing it too. For me, it's like I feel the guides around me and they're hugging me so that you have my energies being drawn out. But I also worked with filters, the idea, well, I'm, I want to attract this, but I don't want that. And for the longest time, it's been filters instead of just shields. And then it's no longer shields. So I know this is really advanced and I keep learning it for myself. I don't know how to really then explain it for people that are still, when your mind, and even I think some people, you still need the concept of, of, of the defense because your mind is thinking that way. So you do need it. You can't take that out unless you properly replace it with this other mechanism that we're talking about. And another thing I want to add is, you were mentioning how you were, uh, Kristen, feeling your, and I've been doing that too lately, and I've been connecting my emanations to touch 
the plants around me so that we're really, really reforming the ecosystem because we've been trained for thousands of years to be separate. And I'm reworking with animism where it's like, okay, because my issue is always electrolytes. I'm always getting faint, my eye, I'm getting dizzy and I need these micro minerals. But I'm like, I'm breathing out things that then the plants are breathing to me. So I'm like, I should be feeling more supported that I'm breathing these minerals in and out even, yeah. So this whole concept of literally take up your space, own your space has a whole other level. But I think there's so much more to it. So it's really hard to explain because it's, it feels advanced. It's not that simple, but I'm loving that you said it. Yeah, I feel the same as well. It's almost like the way I see it is almost like there's like many, many points, like connection points in our fields. And then it's almost like these tentacles just out from there. And then we can connect to the trees or to a plant, to an animal. And just by focusing on it and having the intention and knowing that we can connect with it and that we're not separate, it starts flowing very easily into our field and out because it, it goes both ways, whether it's another human, whether it's an animal, a plant, a being of another dimension, it's, it's all sort of the same thing happening. And I think that's what we're starting to remember as well as our bodies are developing, that we, we hold so much more in the body than we than we thought we do i'm very excited as well to see what will will continue to come online because i think we are in for massive shifts in the physical body i i I, I think the human potential i i think we're we're going to be so amazed you know i mean it's happening and like you're saying it's shifting really fast so we'll be happily surprised Denise? I was just going to add, um, so we kind of feel of these six senses, um, but I heard a while ago that there's like 360 senses and I can't, I can't even begin to fathom how that might, I mean, even another five, you can kind of <laughs> like, oh, how can that even be? And I, you know, I don't know that it is 360 but it puts an interesting angle on things of, of, you know, where we could actually, where we're moving to. Yeah. So the Galactics, and thank you both for, for all those, that, that was a really helpful, um, I feel that was a really key, there was a lot of amazing things came up in that conversation and, and this, I love that that just kind of flowed flowed into there so thank you both for that um so the galactics you're both very connected galactically as as well um which is amazing like not just to have this you know inner earth you can't get as you can't get much more grounded and and earth earthy than inner earth and yet there's there's the whole cosmos out there there's there's the whole the whole realm of the galactic beings so do you feel you connect do you feel these beings are you like other aspects of you multi-dimensional aspects of you do you think they all are do you think it's a bit of a, a mix how, how does that work for you and and what kind of what kind of beings do you connect with mostly <laughs> you want to go first Alexandra? um that's a really really tricky question are they all you or aspects of you because that's a question I have my cat attacking me right now um maybe I should be talking about cat things um I have that same question when I think of guides and spirit guides is it an aspect of you but I my feeling is you start with aspects of you back to the tentacles or the frequencies that you're beaming which is all an aspect of you but it feels more exciting for me when that part of you then does meet someone else that you do resonate with. Because if I'm just talking to myself, it, it doesn't feel accurate. There is something else. Um, and I always felt that. So, so it's yes and both for me. And as far as who I connect with, so I have a cat sitting behind me. You can't see her right now. <laughs> I connect. I started using the words frequencies because it was really hard 
to, <laughs> you can't see her, Shiva. Um, it was hard for me to think of beings because everything was, there was collectives and then there was plasma beings and there's crystal fairy beings, but they were so joined or maybe they're merged with their planet. And then there's planetary consciousness and crystal planets. And so it was easier for me to say frequencies. Sorry, my cat's behind me. I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> Does your cat wanna come on camera? I, well, I, um, I would have to do here. You can't see her. She's sitting behind me and she's, I might have to take care of her. She's doing something. If you, if, you know, feel free if, if you need to. I might have to do some oh, cat. <laughs> Look at my thing. Yeah, for me, the galactics uh, started coming in quite early. So I've seen uh, different types. Often they don't tell me their name or where they're from um and of course from like the the highest perspective it's all an aspect of me because we're all one um but i do feel more connected to some of them and for example with the blue beings i do know and i have had the remembrance of that i am one of them um so i have about a year ago i had the experience that i certainly just sitting right where I'm sitting now and I was eating my breakfast and suddenly I saw through my eyes in a whole different way and I just heard it's like yay I'm here like finally um and I I have had memories from that um planet I don't know really what to call it um so I I feel very connected with that um other frequencies I can feel it's, it's just like Alessandra says, really, that it's different frequencies. It, it has like an energetic signature, so you can feel that frequency. And it's not, I mean, I have met Andromedas, I've had met Arcturians, like, but it's, it's not so much for me about who they are, what their name is, even though my human mind often would want to know. Uh, it's about the frequency, the message, the interaction. Um, yeah, I think that's quite quite important. Uh, I do feel that there. It's so easy, sort of, to think that it's different places, right? So it's like here on Earth, we are, and there's another planet, and there are these beings having their society there, and you know, we we make it so much in that way to for the human mind to to sort of grasp it or we make these pictures of it but it's I experience it more as dimensional fields just in on layers so if I shift my frequency I can feel more of it and it's right here I don't need to sort of go somewhere even though when I astral travel for example I can I experience it as if I'm going somewhere and on a physical level, it kind of will be a different level, place, um, but it's really all about frequency. So it's just another dimension or all layers in the same reality. Like for example, if there's, let's say something close, a spirit, someone who has passed, for example, it's quite close to us in frequency compared to an Andromedan, for example. So, even though most people can't see them with their eyes in the same room, they can be there. And it's the same with an Andromeda. It's just another frequency, just another layer, layer that we can, can have like in really in the same space. And that's probably why, as you mentioned before, that it started with you seeing, you know, people who have passed because it's, it's a nearer, it's a closer frequency. Yeah. And I, I love that we've brought into this conversation, you know, planetary consciousnesses too. Yeah. Um, and that probably took me a little bit longer to accept perhaps than, you know, than beings from different planetary, different, you know, places. 
Yeah. Um, I love that you opened that portal and just stepped through it there, Alessandro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where is that? I'm talking about portals now. <laughs> Hello. Did you catch all right? Yeah. Um, she ate too many bugs and now she's having an off day. <laughs> <laughs> was there anything else about... Um, <clears throat> Was there anything else about galactic beings that anybody wanted to share? Funny that you bring, <laughs> funny that you're holding. Okay. <laughs> this is why you said beings. I'm like, ah, it's frequencies. <laughs> because so I started getting these downloads uh, that's related to this crystal, which funnily is melted quartz, which I thought was like, oh no, you only want raw. But I'm like, whoa, whoa this works great. Um, okay, so this um, is connecting to the Aldebaran, Aldebaran Stargate. So now I'm working with Stargate frequencies. And around there, there's plasma beings or plasma collectives, crystal fairy plasma collectives. But what I like is that this whole, I just want to hold it up. Um, this whole Aldebaran Stargate, what's so beautiful about it of when I feel the frequency is it's not about them, it, the Stargate, la la la. It's reflecting, reflecting back to the earth, things that we are missing in our ecosystem. So all the plants, all the crystals, all the animals, they need more love and support. Um, the plants could be bigger, they could be richer. I mean, the animals are losing their ground of the area, the land where they eat and hunt and everything. So I found it so beautiful that you have this, you know, ecstasy making energy downloads that I'm getting, but it's all about here bring it to the earth. <laughs> so that's why it's like, I can't tell you about being so much because it's this and it's abstract. And yet while it's still abstract, which we have this, I still love it because with the empathy, I'm feeling all of these high-minded frequency beings collective that love us, the earth, they're in the earth. And it's hard to explain, but there's just more energy, more support. And it's, ends up being very galactic and down into the earth with the inner earth beings and kingdoms or queendoms. And it just ends up being that there's more. There's not just the fairy kingdom and not just the inner earth, but there's many, many, many infinite. So it kind of gets really exciting and very crazy. <laughs> and also weird. we are weird. these beings, right? So yeah. we are light beings in the physical body we're just having this physical body as a vessel so i got like i think two three years ago they said that there's a lot of people talking about and there will be a lot of people talking about disclosure but a real disclosure is when the human sees themselves because we are already here i love that yeah the galactic human <sighs> Beautiful. Now, are we okay for time? Do we have time for a transmission? Yes. <laughs> I can do that. Brilliant. Um, who would like to, yeah, water, that's a good idea. Is anybody feeling that they would like to begin? I have my instruments here, but I need to make sure that you can hear them. So, can you hear the bowl? Yeah. It may be going off slightly, but I can definitely hear it. Are you on the computer? I'm on computer. On the... Um, you might be able to change a, a setting um, if I can remember how to do it. Um, oh, I can't. I can't see on there because I've not got audio. Don't don't worry. Let me try, just in case, if this can be heard. Otherwise, I'm gonna give up for today. 
No. This is like in the beginning, yes, and then it got quiet. Okay, well, next time I'm going to have a sound technologist. There is, there is a setting that you might be able to find. It might be top left on your screen, and there might oh, be a little... I'll figure that out for next time. Not, not, okay. I'm not going to undo the flow. Are you happy to share some light language? Instead. Oh, I always do it with instruments. Did <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody else want to go? A good for like a short. I think it, it's when Zoom thinks it's background noise and it cancels it out, so it just lets it in for a short, a short bit. Christine, would you like to and begin? <laughs> So I invite anyone who wants to receive this light language to just breathe into the body and open up and allow for receiving the frequency and just stay in the body the whole time. Balaki to the dam that did a dear. Cocola him a diddy hand of the dun. Well, he are not to delay it on a curra de kitun, tetata. Taka licky tetato do it to the ah. Hush the harnaki, lecky to do na man lecky para the kitty paper ticket to burn. O lecky para naked at that monkey the boy to the ah. Cocola kitty horror and kitty good to do na.
Thank you. I'm not in the right language today. A lot of water and earth in that, Denise. Getting a lot of fire afterwards, like as soon as we. <laughs> See, stop. I'm all red. I'm really warm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoa. Can you show us that crystal half again, please? It's beautiful. I wonder, because it seems to be the long notes that it doesn't like. Do you want to try again? All it does is long notes. It'll be for another time. Honestly, there's been so much energy here. I think that we've been gifted with beautiful treasures right now. <sighs> Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My absolute pleasure. That was a really beautiful, beautiful conversation, beautiful frequencies. Is there anything you wish to, to add before we go? Let's um, please share where people can get hold of you for one thing. Or it is on the post, but um, good. Good to say to, I think. Well, for me, everything is through my website. <laughs> Everything's my name, alessandragiali.com. And then through the website, it's, it's alessandragiali at gmail.com. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I have a YouTube channel, which is called, called Heart of Light. And I have a page on Facebook with the same name, Heart of Light. Um, and through there, you can, can reach me as well. And I have my email address on both of them, if anyone wants to, to connect. Yeah. Beautiful. Anything else that needs to be said before we, before we finish? It just sounds like we have a lot of exciting things unfolding basically immediately and they've been unfolding so it looks like there's just a lot of excitement and not even just hope but new new surprises good surprises just boom 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 yeah and also what i'm hearing now what they're saying is that there are some of those watching now uh feeling what would be the right word sometimes it's so difficult difficult to translate energy into words. Um, not really confused, but almost like um, some, somewhere between optimistic and discouraged uh, because they, they don't feel they're in the right place or I'm not there yet. Uh, and what they're saying that the most important thing is to come back to you. And there's, I mean, anyone has been through and are going through challenges all the time and to know that really come come back to to who you are and being it's all about embodying more of who we are and being that person in the world not trying to be like someone we see outside of ourselves but really coming in and, and just allowing for who we truly are to emerge out because that's what's shifting everything the more we can allow ourselves to be the more we connect with other beings, the more we connect with other humans coming into our lives that are on the same frequency that we do match with. Um, and the more we actually activate each other because we are field when we are emitting this frequency out that we truly are. And that field is bumping into some other field of a person we're meeting on the street. It actually, it actually can activate them because it can be a resonance of that frequency and that can activate their own remembrance. So 
I think it's really important that people know that they're doing a lot, even though they might not feel that they're doing a lot just by being who they are. Um, I think that's very, very important to remember. <sighs> Thank you both. This has been, been a really delightful, delovely conversation. Thank you both. And thank you to everybody who's been who's been with us as well. And thank you for the for the lovely comments. And thank you for sharing and thank you for your for your support in this. So with love from the three of us here, we will see you soon. Love, 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 love. Bye. Bye. Bye.